Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with one of the most popular themes on the channel, monthly dividend ETFs. For my money, there is nothing better than that diversified low risk fund that is going to put cash in your pocket every single month. But the problem is how to find the best monthly dividend ETF. There are more than 600 funds paying monthly. Where do you even start with something like that? Right here. I'll be ranking the top monthly dividend funds by yield, dividend consistency, and total return all to help you find the five best for your money. I want to get started on our list with the Russell 2000 Covered Call ETF, the RYLD, with its 12.4% dividend. But stick around and I'll show you how I found these dividend payers as well. The RYLD is one of the many covered call strategy income funds, holding shares of companies or an index and then selling call options each month to create that stream of income. The ETF holds shares of stocks in the Russell 2000 index, the 2000 smallest companies in the index, so this one is that small cap focus with stocks you might not be familiar with, like Comfort Systems and Elf Beauty, but also some popular ones like Supermicro, MicroStrategy, and Carvana. And at the bottom of the holdings on the fund's website, we can see the call options it's sold, the income it's collected to pay that dividend. Most of these covered call ETFs sell options against about 1% of the fund each month to meet that roughly 12% annual dividend yield. What I like about the RYLD is that small company focus, which should give it a growth aspect as well. Of course, over the last few years, it's been those big giant tech companies that have outperformed, but historically, small cap stocks have outperformed the larger ones. Despite the RYLD's 12.4% dividend yield though, it's only produced a 2.7% annualized total return over the last five years. I'll explain what this means and how it factors into our list later, but if you only care about the dividend yield, this is one to watch. Otherwise, some of the other funds are going to strike a better balance between the dividends and price return. This next monthly payer actually surprised me to get on the list. The Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, the popular QYLD, with its 11.9% dividend. And this did surprise me, not for making a high yield monthly dividend list, but that it's edged back into positive total return, one of the filters I used for this list. The fund holds stocks in the NASDAQ 100 index, a tech heavy group of stocks, but also with some decidedly non-tech companies like Costco, Pepsi, and T-Mobile. It's just the largest companies that have decided to list on the NASDAQ. And here you see how the fund is able to pay that high 11.9% dividend. Holding those stocks, each month it sells call options against parts of the portfolio. Selling a call option gives another investor the right to buy that amount of stocks at a certain price, but the seller, the ETF here, it's going to collect that cash premium, which it uses to pay out the dividends. Here we see the fund has sold a call option expiring May 17th on about 450 million in shares. But then one of the biggest problems we've seen with the QYLD over the last few years is that when the NASDAQ surges, the call options used by the fund means the ETF underperforms. The upside is that in times when the NASDAQ is falling, the QYLD won't fall by quite as much and you're still going to get that dividend. So part of the decision here is really which you prefer that higher upside potential or some downside protection and the dividend yield. Now the fund has produced a 7% annualized total return over the last five years with that 12% dividend yield paid out on a monthly basis. You always collect those dividends, but if you ever sell the stock, the falling share price may eat into some of that return there. So for all its downsides, the QILD can still be a good investment for someone living off their dividends and not really worried about the price destruction. Nation, the only thing better than dividend stocks for monthly cash flow is real estate, but I know from experience, managing your own properties can be a giant headache. That's where today's sponsor, Baselane, comes in, an all-in-one platform for real estate investors with banking, accounting, and property management all in one place. Baselane has it all, banking, rent collection, bookkeeping, and more, all with no monthly fees or minimum balances. The platform is easy to use, integrating everything together from banking, rent collection, and reporting all the way through to your cash flow. Replace your old bank account with Baselane Banking, tailor-made for landlords. Open an account in minutes and better organize your finances with unlimited virtual accounts and cards. Baseline makes it easy to pay expenses with free ACH and wires, all while earning a market-leading annual percentage yield on your money and up to 5% cash back. Rent collection can be a nightmare for property investors, but automated rent collection with Baseline is hassle-free. The platform sends out reminders, tracks rent payments, and auto-charges late fees, making it easy for tenants to pay from any device. Baselane's smart bookkeeping helps you take control of your numbers with automated cash flow tracking, analytics, and tax reporting, 
making your rental property business as stress-free as possible. Baselane handles the day-to-day -day so you can focus on growing your rental business. So head over to www.baselane.com slash Joseph to sign up for Baselane for free and get a chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card or just look for the link I'll leave in the video description below. Back to our monthly dividend list and the highest payer of the group, the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF, ticker SVOL, with its 16.5% yield. And while it might not pay that high dividend yield forever, it's produced a 9% annual total return over the three-year life of the fund, and I really like this one for adding a different asset class into the portfolio. Now, volatility is just how much the market or a stock moves up or down in a given period, a gauge of stock market craziness. The volatility index, the VIX, is the market's expectation for volatility over the next month, so how crazy investors believe stock prices will be. And while you can't invest directly in the volatility index, you can invest indirectly through futures, options, and ETFs, betting on whether actual volatility will be higher or lower than expected. But the SVOL isn't really making a directional bet here either. It's simply saying that market expectations for volatility are typically higher than actuality. Shorting those expectations, so selling futures contracts against the VIX, is a way to capture that fear premium in the market. And this strategy is backed up by research, testing VIX futures shorting from 2005 through 2015, rolling the short contract over each month was profitable in 8 of the 11 years, with an average monthly return of 0.7%, and a total return of 118% over the period. And best here, the VIX has a historically negative correlation with stocks. When stocks go up, the VIX goes down and vice versa. That correlation here is negative 0.84, which is very strong and means using that volatility strategy along with your stock portfolio can be a great way to reduce risk. So I love that this is an opportunity in a different asset class. There are plenty of stock dividend funds and those covered call ETFs basically all doing the same thing. An investment in one is pretty much the same as any, and they're all going to go in that same direction along with the market. But here with the volatility ETF, you have the opportunity to spread your risk out into another asset that shouldn't move one-to-one -one with stocks, getting that high dividend yield plus minimizing your risk. We'll get back to our monthly dividend list, but notice I'm not highlighting every single monthly ETF. Here I'm highlighting the top five ETFs, but there's actually 612 dividend funds out there. And Honestly, a lot of crap ETFs that I wouldn't touch with free money, let alone with your hard-earned cash. So narrowing down that list of 600 plus dividend funds, I looked for three criteria and I wanted to share this because it's a great start to narrowing down any list of ETFs. First, the fund had to have assets under management of at least $50 million. Now I've got nothing against new ETFs. It takes some time to raise funds. Uh, the problem here is that if an ETF hasn't grown to at least $50 million in assets over a few years, the fees collected just aren't going to be enough to pay management and there is a good chance that the fund gets closed down. You can see here the number of ETFs closed has been rising each year for the last decade and the bear market a few years ago saw hundreds liquidated. And when that happens, the fund manager sells the assets and returns the money to investors so it's not a total loss but it sucks having to find another fund. The next criteria I used was an expense ratio under 0.7% annually. And even that is really high compared to some of those Vanguard or Fidelity funds that charge you just 0.1% to hold the investment. The reason why many of these are higher is because they're more actively managed and it costs more to manage those monthly dividends rather than just a small normal quarterly one. That said, I still wouldn't pay much more than 0.7% expense fee even for these best of funds. One criteria here you might not use with all your ETFs, but definitely for these, a dividend yield over 5%. Monthly payers offer some of the highest dividends in the market, so why settle for anything lower than the best? Just those three criteria really narrowed our list. Then I filtered for those with the best total returns and the dividend consistency you can count on. The only thing that will surprise longtime citizens of the Bowtie Nation with the JP Morgan Equity Income ETF, ticker JEPI here, is that it didn't make the top of the list. I've highlighted the fund before and I like it for that balance between yield and price return. At 7.6% dividend yield, it's the lowest on the list, but meanwhile, it's also produced one of the highest total returns. Investors have made 12.2% annualized over the four-year life of the fund, which means this one is growing the share price as well as putting cash in your pocket. The fund invests in defensive, large-cap stocks, but also some tech growth for those price returns. You see here safety stocks like Progressive Corporation and the Southern Company along with names like Amazon, Alphabet, and Microsoft. So that diversification gives it safety when the market tumbles. Then the portfolio manager sells those call options on the S&P 500, that broad stock market index, 
to generate the cash flow for its dividends. That makes it similar to that strategy used by the QYLD, selling those call options or the other instruments to produce that 7% yield. Now, for those of you living off your dividends, this one can provide that high yield without the price loss you get with QYLD usually. You get the nearly 8% dividend cash flow and just that little extra price return at 12% total return over the last four years. But the downsides to the JEPI and many of these monthly dividend ETFs is these are not qualified dividends. So the money you collect is going to be added to your income and taxed at those rates. Overall, though, if we're talking about dividend ETFs, this one has something for everyone. I'm going to reveal the top monthly dividend fund next, but the only thing better than monthly cash flow is dividends every week. Check out this video for a list of 12 dividend stocks that will put cash in your pocket every week of the year. And our top monthly dividend ETF here is a new one, the JP Morgan NASDAQ Income ETF, the JEPQ, with its 9.3% dividend yield. So this one is similar to the QYLD with that focus on the NASDAQ 100 index, but with the expertise of JP Morgan managers that we saw there with the JEPI, this one has produced a 20% annualized return over the fund's two-year life. The JEPQ is also going to be holding those stocks in the NASDAQ 100, the tech-heavy group of stocks, and selling call options against them to create that income. So what I'm really interested to see here is that how this stacks up over time against that Global X QYLD ETF. They're both holding the same stocks and using the same strategy. The only difference is going to be how they manage it to produce those higher returns and cash flow. Check out Baselane with the link below. Sign up for free and get a chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Or click on the video to the right for the 12 dividend stock portfolio that puts cash in your pocket every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.